I think the Immaculate Reception definitely gained momentum in history because the Steelers then went on to win four Super Bowls in six years. It becomes like the cornerstone of this fantastic edifice that they began to build. Every great myth has an origin story to it, in the Greek gods and in, in the Bible, and there's always that story. It's opera, right? Or at least, you know, sports opera. That Immaculate Reception play, the reason that it caught on, it was proof that we weren't wrong, our belief wasn't wrong, that somewhere above there was a higher power that also felt that that team was worthy of winning. That play, if you're still a fan, you believe in it. If you're a sinner like them damn Raiders, uh, you'll never accept it. So it's almost like the Bible, a myth to some and a faith to others. The Immaculate Reception is such a seminal part of the Steel City's identity. The play has become the feature attraction at Pittsburgh's satellite of the Smithsonian Institution. This is a great moment of NFL history and American history. Anybody know what this is depicting? The Immaculate Reception. Immaculate Reception. More than 50,000 school kids come to the History Center every year. We don't indoctrinate them here at the History Center. It's fourth and 10, 22 seconds are remaining. Steelers have no timeouts. There's pretty much no hope of them winning this game. Okay, Bradshaw's the Steelers quarterback, under center takes a snap. You see the actual turf? And as you see the X up there, that is the spot where Franco caught the ball. That is the spot in American history happened right there. It's one of those things that people who come to the sports museum come and revere as they would uh, an icon or a relic. We also have the shoes that Franco was wearing that day. We take the same care with the tartan turf and Franco's shoes as we would things that are on loan from the Vatican or even the Declaration of Independence. The film of the Immaculate Reception plays at the History Center every five minutes, every day of the week, every day of the year. You just can't help but be mesmerized by that image. It's an image that made history. Unfortunately, in our culture, there's only one thing that matters is who wins. The winner writes the history book. The winner gets the Super Bowl trophy. The winner's the genius. You have to win. It's one of the great moments in uh, National Football League history. It's not a great moment in Raider history. The Immaculate Reception changed the Raiders forever, and the Silver and Black erected a myth of their own. We don't call it the Immaculate Reception. We call it the Immaculate Deception. You know, this is the 40th anniversary of the Immaculate Deception as we call it here in Oakland. Sure, yeah. The public was deceived, the officials deceived, and we got deceived. If you could have packaged all that anger and frustration, it probably would have been nuclear. It probably would have been equivalent to a nuclear bomb. 40 years later, emotions are still raw, especially with John Madden. That play bothered me then, bothers me today, and will bother me until the day I die. They didn't call it a touchdown. The officials talked in the end zone, like right down there, and the referee goes over to the dugout, talks to someone on the phone. Fifteen minutes later, after the play comes out, says touchdown. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> your man, your man but, Fred Swearingen. Madden remains so upset, he refused to be interviewed for this documentary. Like every Raider who experienced the play, he was permanently scarred. Anytime something would go wrong, of course they're going to think it was a conspiracy. You big jerk! You don't call You ever call one on them? The Raiders were able to use it as a motivation that led to the next 10 years 
during which no team won more games. The Super Bowl really exists for the Oakland Raiders. All along, they've been thinking it was somebody's crazy illusion. And that all started in the seconds after the Immaculate Reception.